<laughs> so what how how is your how do you order your channels? Alright. I'm using ten different sends and returns. Ten? Ten. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the button. Okay. Eight, nine, ten on the button. Mad. Right. Yeah. And the button turns the send on and off. Yeah. The knobs, of course, allow you to get the in-betweens. So I much prefer the knobs. Um, but my old system used to have a lot of buttons, so I just kept those two. Yeah. In that spirit, you know? Yeah. So I set it up. Uh, delay, reverb, 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 delay, delay, phaser, delay. <laughs> wow, you love delay. Yeah. And the uh, one knob filter. Okay. The homemade. And how do you run it across? I get three drum tracks, percussion, bass, organ, skanks and bangs. Okay. Horns, or if not, roads or something, belly instrument. Uh, a leads one, and a lead guitar or pick. Lead vocals, background vocals. Okay. Yeah. Always splitting lead and background. Always. Okay. Yeah. I like hearing the backgrounds by themselves dubbed out. Yeah, I yeah. vibe to that, especially with the singers I work with. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man. How do you set up yours? Channel-wise, it's always kick, snare, overheads, everything else. Yeah. The toms. Sometimes Tim Barley goes in with the overhead. Sometimes I'll put it in with the snare. Depends if I kind of got a feeling like I want to dub it. Yeah. Percussion. Normally, I put tambourine in with the overheads as well, because normally I tend to, when there's no hi hats, I wouldn't have tambourine. Right, right. Bass on five, pick on six, bang and scratch on seven, mm -hmm. shuffle on eight, mm. and then nine, ten, eleven are kind of custom bespoke to each track. Yeah. Twelve is always vocals. Okay. Eleven sometimes is backing vocals. Okay. More time if it's like a a separate backing, like I like it if there's like a, a female backing and a male lead or something. Yes, sir. But sometimes if the backing's not saying much, I'll put it all in on 12. Makes sense. And then, yeah, whatever horns and whatever lead mm -hmm. instruments, if it's synth or anything else, we'll get yeah. in there. And this delay, 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 reverb, reverb, phaser, high pass filter, then this row is something bespoke to each instrument. Yeah. Uh, so some filters, the bass, maybe some distortion, some filters on the bang and the scratch, the pick, some sort of like manipulation for the pick. Yeah. Um, voice, telephone voice, that was, that was your inspiration still. Oh. Uh, and then the bottom row I keep for, for gain, like a, an extra gain in case I'm going to push something to the front of a dub mix. Yes, which I need to start doing. Yeah, man, I love how, how you set it up. Very logical. Likewise, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. Has that always been your format? In, like, do you structure your... It's the same format in Pro Tools when I mix. Yeah. <laughs> And I put the organ next to the bangs. Because that's how I bubble. When I play, I play with the left hand organ, right hand piano, so it's just logical for me. Left hand, do you play the bubble? Yeah. Right. Okay, so you always, okay, map that out. Did I just, the delay was on a button there? Yep. Okay. So 
what was this? A sound effect? Yeah, this is a pull up. A pull up sound effect. Pull up sound effect. Right. Pull up, no, 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 no. We'll pull it up. And we said a key one. Don't teach us how to this one here. You can map them to a sample and a pull up using a dummy trap. Right. But I have many ways of pulling up a track. How do you pull up a track? I heard you. <laughs> Rego, space bar. <laughs> no, man. No, it's been, you delay out things. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Depends what kind of pull up, you know what I mean? Normally, I, I like the pull ups to be quite abrupt, so yeah. space bar or <laughs> I also use this wheel as my uh, scene select. So, and I keep a blank space in between each set of stems so that I can always just trigger back to the blank space and it's kind of mad if you've got some uh, delays that are, um, what do you call it when a delay is like tempo, when it's, when it's time, a time based delay like a eighth triplet mm -hmm. or whatever and sometimes the, the blank space is a different tempo so the whole delay switches up and it's a nice kind of pull up as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, working with singers, you need a real quick pull up. So I think these came in handy. Okay. In that sense. But I also have the filter out. Okay. So start like that. Or finish like that. for the mic That's right. Yeah. So yeah, your master favorites, right? Yeah, that, that section is master, so I was putting up. <laughs> and that's a, like the thing with this is it's kind of like it's got its own quirks, you know, the analog thing has its own set of analog quirks and the digital thing has its own set of digital quirks and probably a lot more quirks well i never worked in analog like you so maybe there's a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. but i know you're a man that's well versed in the analog tracking world and things yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you kind of share my sentiment that it's like yeah. the power of this setup and it fits in a rucksack yeah. and it has yeah. all of that. I don't feel like I miss anything in terms of feelings from the analog dub. Of that. course there's a bit of character like you're never really going to emulate the right. sound of slamming something into an actual mechanical spring. Right. But right. In terms of the feeling of the way I engage with the, you know, the faders and the delays, and in some ways it's like it's, it's kind of fiddly because it's smaller, but it's yeah. like, you know, sometimes dubbing analog is like Stretch Armstrong, you know, it's like <laughs> one fade is over here, and it's something nice about it being so compact and digital world is nice because this is twelve stereo stems. Yeah, exactly. And it's like an analog thing, it's, you know, wow. sometimes double faders and yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bit mash up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, to fit six ends and an analog setup would take way more than this table and, and a lot of different modules yeah. to control all the different parameters that you can control. Oh yeah, this is like a <laughs> whole big outboard rack, you know. Yeah, the whole spread would be for that alone. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's 2022, man. I mean, the plugins do so much. The plugins emulate so well right now <laughs> that I can imagine you don't miss much from the world and you love the flexibility. Beat long fence kind of melody. Good, thanks, Abba. Yeah, man. Well, that's good. And you've got some of the signature sounds on the, on the pad as well. Yeah. Thunderclap from Dublin Rainforest. 
is for some reason. The highest grade is I grade. Samples made up by Mashaka. Koran. Man. <laughs> yeah, the iconic dub in the ring for the sound still. <laughs> yes, I And then I can bank it and get it. Mm -hmm. okay. Sampled by Mr. La. Big shot siren. Nice. <laughs> Same, all my <coughs> sampled from my original siren box from the sound system. <laughs> yeah, I've seen you play that thing like an instrument. Yeah, yeah. because there's some uh, samples of the cine on it as well. Kind of need more of an angle to, to get into that vibe, but you can turn up the the uh, release time, take off the delay and some reverb, and then manipulate the pitch. I mean, it really feels like the original Sine, the, the yeah, Shaka yeah. was like popularized so well. Yes, yeah, so. and that clip in Babylon where he's playing it with a drumstick, and <laughs> but that's the that's that's the, the foundation of that vibe still. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a lot of it is. That's what's also beautiful about it in the live that world is like this hybrid of sound system, mm -hmm. studio, selection, mm -hmm. all in in one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you share that sentiment oh, as well. The sure, dynamic, yeah. dynamic component of it with the people. Yes, yes, yes. And then vocal, vocal effects. When you've got the mic, of course, and then you do the same. You route, yeah. route any delay you want from our system into into the mic. So yeah, what I've actually done is on my vocal, where my lead vocal would normally be, uh -huh. is also the effects for the mic. Oh. Because as soon as the singer steps up. <coughs> I'm putting the That's lead vocal right. down and then all of the effects I would normally have on my lead vocal I've got on the mic. Proper. Just the MIDI mapping is doing dual duty. That's yeah, right. it's just mapped to yeah. the to mic the input time. on the in, in the Ableton. Yeah. And Ableton's another trip altogether. Yeah. It's like oh. and never ending amount of options, you know. Yeah. No, nice. it's built for I and I as dubs, as producers and as dub engineers. Ableton is the most, um, it serves all the needs you would need as a dub mixer, as a, as a performer, if you want to put it like that, with all the yeah. options of stretching and all the, the layout, you know, it just makes sense. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And, and, and even some opportunity to go another realms uh, than where you could. Yeah different, you know, loops and, and things like that. I've, I've programmed some loops, I'm kind of working on getting them there, but yeah. it's nice, you know, if there's a really solid sort of like 32 or 64 bar loop, right. to just be able to drop into that as it would normally yeah. be the end of the song and then yeah. just get lost in a dub mix for 12, 15 minutes and yeah. <laughs> pray that everyone. Like all of that can be done. Yeah, you do that already, right? Yeah, 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 yeah more or less. I'm, I'm, and and it's nice, you know, because it's sometimes it's like a lot of the songs. It's like you might have your favorite moment in the song, and 
on the production, of course, that's just going to come one time and go, but yeah. when you can loop it in the dub and manipulate it and keep coming back and or like some, I uh, find that I often end up with a lot of breakdowns yeah. in my music. And yeah. I love the breakdown, like I yeah. really, really love it. Yeah. What would normally be a 32 bar break if I can stretch it out to like 64, 128 or whatever. <laughs> I love that. Dramatics. Yeah, I love that. It gives you that option, you know, to really go with the feeling yeah. in the place. Like really tune in to the people, them, and it's true. expose them to the things where it's like you could never put that out on record. Yeah. Just would be too much for people's attention span. Yeah. So when you got everyone in the room, yeah. you can just go into those realms and then, boom, anytime you're ready, yeah. you just drop back into your loops. Yeah, no, there's certain things that can be done that couldn't be done on analog and also couldn't be done with a band. You know, Definitely. when you drop out and go to bass, bass alone for yeah. 60 seconds of a dub yeah. <laughs> with a singer right there singing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a powerful thing. Yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. So show me, show me the... especially with the buttons, the speed of your hands really affects the kind of sound you can get. Definitely. And it's not, you know, I find myself flying these things <laughs> and fader caps fly off. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 certain other controllers that I've used, the faders have been real stiff and it sort That's of like, I mean. affects the way you've, you yeah. know, pushed them around and it's smooth. And it's just nice, like, you know, the sort of, uh, the different components and yes, uh, nice to just like everything kind of exactly where you want it, you know. 
<laughs> it all matches. You remember my, my rigs that used to be mishmash and yeah. all kind of different things. I was like, Chris, all black. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, the dub rigs. Yeah, man. 